Hello and welcome to uh, the uh, next project I'll be doing, which is uh, this kit here. Well, you can tell by the title what it's going to be. It's the Fujimi 148th Mitsubishi Asics M20. Now, uh, I picked this up from a show. It cost me £7. I don't know whether Fujimi still do this kit or not. Uh, it's um, manufactured by Fujimi Moki Company Limited made in Japan. Now it doesn't say what year this was made. It probably says something in the structure so on the bottom of the box but it doesn't say on this top box. Anyway, uh, I picked this up from a show. It says no pilot included. Oh, fair enough. We go have the, um, that cockpit open anyway in this thing. So this is going to be part one of the uh, process build. Now for you who didn't watch the uh, the Cosford video I did, which I picked this up from, uh, I'll show an inbox review of the actual kit itself. So let's start off with the instructions. We have of course all in Japanese of course. I wish I could learn Japanese so I could understand it. Now, Get rid of this crap on the desk. do not say what year it was from. Oh, here you go, 2004. So, it's not a bad kit. 2004. So, we open the first page up and we got our part call outs, which, of course, isn't a lot there. So, it's going to be a short, quick kit as they spot it. Our first part is the cockpit. Now, I have to look for the number of parts, and there will have to be a number of um, obstacles to co go across. Uh, the Jimmy kits are very good with detail on the outside but for interior not that very well. Now the I've had a look at the instrument panel, that's fine, but there is going to be some scratching, scratch building around the actual cockpit itself. Uh, I'm going to change the seat round, I'm going to cut it basically to make it look like a real uh, zero seat as you'll find out in a bit why it doesn't look the same and uh, there's some holes need to be drilled in the firewall and seat placement and all that also uh, moving on down here is the sidewalls now I'm going to add some uh, radio wire and some throttle levers at the side there because of course there's not any now the engine um, it's all really good. The only problem is I'm not sure what to do about the firewall, whether I'm going to replace it with some copper wire or stretch sprue for the uh, spark plugs, but I don't know. Uh, next, the propeller, simple parts there. Next part is actually putting all together. I mean, the, the nice cowling comes in one piece, and the... the um, Radiator outlets are only in the fixed closed position, so they are. Uh, the detail on the fuselage as it goes down is actually very nice, but it's not 100% best, so I'll go with a few review in a minute. Last part is to put the landing gear on the drop tanks, and that's it. Of course, then here's the marking options at the back. Now, I'm actually amazed by how many marking options you can get in this kit. Um, I'm not sure about colour call outs it gives you, but uh, I think most people know what colours um, you gotta use. Uh, if you don't, then I will show you as I go through the building process. Of course, you've got your painted with the pilot, of course, we don't have, so I'll have to look in the stash. 
This is going to go, if um, you talk about which about pilots, this is going to go for a nice diorama piece that I'm thinking of doing. Um, if you have subscribed to me, then you'll notice that um, I've built an, an actual Akagi ship. Now, what comes with it is these tiny little planes like that. And what I was thinking of doing, having the pilot have a remote control model of this, well, not remote control, more a model kit of his aircraft, which would sound and look really good. So that's my idea for this piece. <coughs> Excuse me, I just... Ah, <coughs> throat. Right, now moving on, here's the uh, the marking options. As you can see, there's a lot in there. I know they've been cut out, but they're all still in here somewhere. So that's really nice what they've done. And I'm going to be going for this variant. Um, if I can get it out. Let's get all these parts out of the way. I'm just going to talk to you a bit about them. Uh, get them pieces out of the way for you. This is the version I'm going to be doing, uh, AI-101, which was based on the Akagi, which, of course, is the one I've just done. Now, <coughs> the decals look very good, actually. They're glossy, but uh, the decals are a bit matte. But, however, I have got some decal fix to help with that. Now, the canopy um, here, I need to add another um, gloss varnish to this. Uh, I've... This doesn't normally come like this, it comes in three in that one whole lot. So, uh, what I'm going to have to do, what I've done is I've just basically cut it out with a razor and well, a razor sharp blade and then just cut it out. And I am, um, I've got varnished, but it hasn't come out well, so I'm going to do it again. And hopefully, it should be good. I'm just going to talk about gloss varnish, shake this up a bit. Oh, I think I need some, to get some more of that varnish. Anyway, that's not for it, that's for another model, but I keep it in there safe out of the way. So that's the, the cockpit part I'm just talking to you about. Not co what cockpit part, I mean um, decals and the kind of thing, you know what I mean. Right, so moving on, go do the fuselage halves first. Now, as this is an old kit, uh, it does have raised panel on detail, which is very nice. But there is loads of rivets along the side, which uh, is going to look good with a wash, but they're raised and not internal rivets. So, that's going to be a problem. Uh, I don't think it's going to be much of a problem once it's all done, because it will look even better. Uh, I'm just worried about the decals, that was all. Anyway, fuselage halves looks good. Inside, the cockpit detail is 100% there. Unlike the other Fujimi kit, which I did, was the Val, the HED3A1 um, dive bomber. Uh, with that, I had to do some scratch bills in for the uh, cockpit walls. This one, the Zero, is actually 100% very good. That, so, uh, yes, looks very good. Hmm, very nice. Uh, moving on, we've got the bottom wing, which is going on. Again, lovely detail on there, surprisingly very nice. But a load of raised rivets yet again, but not that detail. Don't, hold on, let's see if we can hear this. Yeah, that's, that's all, that's when they run across the raised rivets. So, yeah, wow, it looks very nice for landing gear purposes and uh, some, yeah, looks very good. Uh, the next pieces um, have the uh, two top wings. Now, I'm not very happy with the way Fujimi have moulded these, um, the cannon parts across here, because I remember, uh, I've watched the film The Wind Rises and he was saying, Jairo Hutsugashi, who made this aircraft, the Zero, was saying that he didn't want any raised rivets because it would add um, wind drag. So he made them all flushed and screw-in rivets. So I don't know why Fujimi have actually done these bolted ones for the cannon pods on the outside. 
So, I'm not sure about that, but anyway, get around to that. But again, lovely detail on that. Lovely. Right, final two parts. We have here the cockpit. <coughs> Excuse me. We have the cockpit here and the other equipment. Uh, as I was saying, the instrument panel does look good. Um, cockpit floor is okay, but not 100% accurate. Now I have added a bit of stretch sprue for a bit of wiring, so do forgive me for that. This is the back wall plate in which I'll have to drill, drill some holes around there. Got your radio equipment, landing gear purposes, drop tank, uh, elevators, wheels, nicely. Now here is the seat. Now as you can see, that doesn't look like a zero seat as you would have seen. So I'm going to have to, that's going to be some massive uh, task to sand down and get all sorted. So yeah. Oh well. It's going to be a challenge this kit is. And finally the last piece which is um, the engine cowling and the prop. Now, I like how Fujimi have moulded that on so you know which piece is which for the actual kit. Uh, the the um, the uh, gun, the engine cowling is in one piece and looks very good. I like that. Engine problems? Nothing. Everything is perfect. Wow. And that's it for the kit really. Um, next part is this little beauty that they put in here. As you, um, I know, so for these decals they give you in the box, they're not all for the just these lot. There's only ones for five variants in this one, and there's more than five in that one, as you can tell. So that's going to be really a task if you don't want, if you're not sure what to do, and you don't have a computer to have a look at reference material, then you've got a problem in your hands. <sighs> So anyway, uh, that's really the bad side of it, but nevertheless it does look good and gives you some nice colours for it. For the grey, uh, Tamaya recommends you use, um, I wonder if I can find it, uh, it's like a grey green it is, I don't know what colour, I've got it somewhere down there, I might show you later, but it's the wrong colour so it's up to you, you can use that, but for this colour, um, which I'm going to do this one for the Pearl Harbour attack, is actually, um, if I can find it, uh, this colour, which is um, XF12 Japanese Navy Grey, which is actually the right colour. So if you ever go build these variants for the actual grey camouflage, then recommend that. Right. Um, the first part, which I'm going to skip ahead to, um, I won't be have time to record this because I'm going to be in and out and doing the uh, Google Hangout session and doing um, some other work on uh, other projects and the group build I'm doing. So I'm going to uh, fix the cockpit and show you what I've done with it and go drill those holes out and hopefully I shall make it really look good. Alright, thank you, and I'll see you in a bit. Right, well, I've made a start on this. Uh, I've cut the bottom half out. Well, bottom half out, I mean bottom floor out. And the, uh, the back plate and the seat have been given uh, some holes to drill out. Uh, the seat, I did send uh, down along the edges and at the top here to make it look realistic and more like a zero seat. And of course, drill the holes out using uh, oh, where is it? Uh, a drill set and some drill pieces here. So that's alright. Uh, apart from that, everything looks well engineered. Uh, oh, another thing is I've added uh, this little thing here is the throttle lever. Which I've added in, and it looks really nice. Okay, need some more glue on that, I think. Uh, <clears throat> right, let's start this build just by having a look at a few things. So, this is 
actually really cool. Second zero, 448 set in the collection. So let's have a look. Uh, number 10. Oh, if, I, if my voice. Please excuse me. I don't know what's up with me, I've just all of a sudden started getting really bugged up in the head all of a sudden. Oh, typical, isn't it? Uh, do 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 do. Number 10. <coughs> ah, these parts then. Let's move these across. I think hopefully you can see this. Uh, a bit. Let me zoom you out a bit more. There you are. Take. Like so. These parts uh, while I'm cut off are actually parts that keep the uh, seat in place. So this is going to be a starting point on what we're going to do. Uh, right. Oh. Oh, that's alright. That's alright. I thought I'd uh, done the holes the wrong way round. So that was lucky. What goes in there, like... Bit of glue on there. And that part slots into there, like so. And then the... I'm just going to let it dry for a minute. Uh, I really like this glue because it's like fast drying stuff. So once that's uh, in, I'll let that dry for a bit. Uh, yeah, it'll look really good. So, so I'm just having a look at the other parts, what we could deal with at the minute. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Well, the side walls, I could put some detail in that. Uh, number 16, let's have a look. Uh, let's go. So I'm going I'm to risk it actually, glue these parts together, like so. Excuse me. Second. Right, I'll go let that dry off and hopefully come back to you in a minute. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is gonna add these sidewall details along here. This is be left to dry over there, and so is that. Uh why did I say this so is that that's not had nothing done to it, so yep. Number sixteen, sixty, sixties. It's the only problem with finding with these kits is that the numbers are 100% correct uh, like that hopefully, oh I've just noticed they got some uh, injection pin marks oh that's alright, let's cover that up in there and uh, the other one goes in there so what goes over that injection pin mark nothing typical right the other one which is number 14 
Alright, so. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's have a look. So, goes out like so. That's pretty cool. So, like that, that's cover. No problem with that whatsoever. So, there you have it. Right, so that's the radio place in. Uh, not sure what else to do so far. We've got a number of uh, things waiting. I suppose we could uh, put the. Uh, oh, so let's just get us out of the way and done with. Move that out of the way, like so. Let's put this joystick in. So that goes. Just having a look. It's actually, it's actually not bad of uh, lack of detail in this kit. It's actually, quite good. So I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm sort of happy about this. Yes. Goes in like so. That's like that. I don't know why. I always prefer to keep them straight, no matter what. I mean, it's in the joystick. Right. So this with this array. Start again. With this radio equipment in, uh, you can actually put some wires back here. You can either use copper cable, or what I'm. Go, strangely going to do is use some stretched sprue here uh, you can make it even thinner if you like like up here, I don't know what's done up here but that should look actually yes that should look perfect so what's go up here so I'm just going to cut these parts off like so Take this glue and we're going to just run some glue along the bottom there and basically attach these parts onto the actual thing itself like that. But don't bend them back yet, so we're going to attach four on. So like so. If it will go on, I said four. I can't, I can't seem to see the other one yet. It should should be there. So, right, so I'm going to do three at the minute. I'm going to leave them there to dry for a bit. Uh, and then what we do is we just, once they've dried to that part, we go bend them round to here. So it looks like actual wires are going back in, if you get what I mean. Up here, I have added the uh, throttle and oil opener. So that looks really good. So yeah, looks really interesting. All right, so let's dry for a couple of bits and come back. Okay, so kind of getting ahead. Um, I've sprayed the cockpit parts with the um, the green. If you're wondering what color it is, I'm using the Tamiya XF71 cockpit green for that. Uh, I did have plan to have it a bit lighter, but obviously I couldn't get any like better like lighting, and it looks okay. So after a bit of weathering, it would do fine. But basically, what I did, I sprayed it on first to try and get a nice colour. But actually, it turned out darker than I expected. So it was down to the old good old 
brush painter. Right, so the next step we're going to put these aside for a minute and we're going to, uh, if you have had a look at the original um, Zero, behind this bulkhead here is painted the Anioki Blue which is, I'm using this colour, of course, Tamiya X13 Metallic Blue and that is an absolute amazing colour to use. So, let's see if you're... Yep, yeah, it's on camera. So, just having a look and see what I can do. So, it's... No, that's not the colour I wanted. Hold on a minute. Let's see if I can mix colour up. Uh, okay, so what's, oh, I've got a bit there, there's a bit, there, got the blue there, there you go, that's what I wanted. That's, this is the blue that you uh, can need for your model, for this modeling purpose. Put that aside there, we go take this brush and then of course using the very light blue here that we have we're going to just paint where the bulkhead is here so very careful just across there give us a guide like so and just kind of just paint it on like that Gonna bring it back a bit more. So do a bit down here. There. So that looks good. The other side down, the other part of the fuselage. Let's get around here. Uh, so I, this the Anioki blue is the main. Um, I'll go put it like met. I don't know how to like pull it, but anyway, it was the typical blue the Japanese zeros had uh, when in that colour for the cockpit. So. Yeah, it does look a nice colour, and I absolutely love it. Uh, go to a bit actually in front of here, just there, just in case anyone does see it at all. And a bit this side as well. Right, so I still reckon the first blue is actually better than these blue than that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think we're going to mix up a bit more. See if I can get some more. So there. So I don't know about this this Tamiya um, paint. It's in one way a good way, and one way it's a bad thing because. Uh, a, it dries so fast because, um, I have no idea why, but it just dries fast. And another reason why it dries fast gives an opportunity to do another coat over the top. So, like this. Like so. Just over the top of this one. Looks good, I think. Yes, it does reckon. Looks okay. So let's just try to see if I can get a lighter colour than before. I'm not sure, I don't think I can. 
on my list. No, no if I can. Oh well. Anyway, no one's hardly going to notice that, so that's going to be like that. Well, if anything changes, I'll um, I'll go ahead and change it and then let you know. So I'm going to let this fully dry, and then we'll come back and start on the cockpit area and add in the detail. Right, so here's where we left off. I'm just going to show you some parts that I've done. Got these. These, this, and this. So, um, like I said, I've gone really far on this and not been able to record as I've been very busy with a lot of things. So, I'm just going to run you through what I've been doing so far. Let's zoom you in. I get you a good rate. This. There you go. Right, so uh, here we have the side walls. Now, I did say that I had added some stretched sprue into the side walls to make the radio equipment. Now, I was going to paint those black, which I, I did at first, but then uh, I noticed um, if I had left it black, um, no one would be able to see them inside the cockpit because it would be so dark. So, excuse me, I continued by painting them yellow. Also the throttle lever and the oil opener have been painted black and with um, a brown cover over the top of them which they originally did have in the Zero. So you have it. There's that piece. Let's see if you're still in a shot. Yeah. Uh, there's a pilot seat. It's all been drilled out as you saw photo etch harness is on and of course the landing gear lever has been painted red as well like in the actual Zero itself. Now seat harnesses were supposed to be actually RAF ones but they were spares so yep they look perfect in that, no one will tell the difference in them. That on the cockpit floor has had some stretch sprue added to the I don't know what it is, but it's a lever anyway, and also some cabling around here, the red cable. And that's really it. Uh, I did have actually have a look at the walk around photos, and this version did have red cables going around the these two boxes. I don't know what for, but they are. They have it. So that's in there. And the last part that I've done is the um, instrument panel. Again, I've gone over black on the dials and then dry brushed over silver to make them stand out a bit more. So with that done, we can zoom you out a bit more if I can do. We can finally move on to the next part, which I am going to be uh, weathering it. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use a very, very thin wash and see how well we go with this so a little bit more of that a bit more onto there I don't want I don't want it too much because it's going to be a fairly new aircraft also come to think about it I haven't done that either where's my hobby knife just uh, I haven't cut the flash off from the inside here I'm just, you're, I'm just that to take you out of focus there. I'll just do the other side. It's just two little bits I've been meaning to cut them off ever since I started this project. Right, so here we are. I'm going to take this and see how it is. That's perfect. Just let it run along there, in there. Just go gently tap it on into the insides there. That's perfect. Tap it in, tap, 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 tap. That's not bad, that's perfect. Like that. Just do the same on the other side. Just drop there. Touch, 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 touch. On the outside there. I just want a very thin wash, don't want too much. 
because it is going to be um, a fairly new aircraft for Pearl Harbor, don't forget. Just going to do the same on this side again. Cross there like that. Looks perfect. Brilliant. Next piece is floor. Same again. Very, very little. Going to do all around here. Like so. Right, just touch a bit up somewhere across here, up the control column. Just like that. Right, leave that to dry over there. Just gonna take away bits across the instrument panel very lightly, don't want too much going on like I said, not too much going in try to get everything to a minimum last not least the seat So, right, so that's done, I think, so, yep. Just add a bit more to side walls here. <sighs> Put a bit too much on, uh, wipe it away. through the holes there we have it perfect well done right we go let that dry now well I am and see you all in a minute or two right so I think we've got um, cockpit sorted which is these parts got the fuselage halves off and now they're actually pretty easy to get off it's nice soft plastic which is very nice um, the Arista hook at the back here that's being added on of course but it's not just like that it's not glued in so just place that there out of the way but I think the first thing I'll do is just get these cockpit components together which is not much really just put a bit of glue in there like that, touch glue in there, touch glue there, just glue these parts together like so. Like that. That part's in there like that. Now, the part is in like so. Yeah, it's nothing I've just realised about the floor. The floor of the zero is slightly up at an angle like that, if you can see on the side there. I, I didn't realise that up until about a couple of minutes ago. So, right, let's put a bit of Glue on just there and there. And there. Uh, like there. So that should be fine. Like so, let that dry for a bit, I think. Make sure this is level. Yep. I think that's right. So, yeah, I'm going to let it dry for a minute and come back into it. Right now it's dried for a bit. I think we better put it together, I think. 
Yeah, I think that's all crap. It's fine. It's the best thing to do, just put it together in there. there. Now it sits in a very weird angle. Now it fits into these two slots here and here. But um so you press down there, make sure that gun sight is above like that. Just hold that in there for a bit. I'm going to put a bit of glue behind this bulkhead here. Wait for that to keep in focus. Let that dry. Let's put the Arista hook on at the back. Put a bit of Wrong bloody way, Michael. I just I was meant to put it up the wrong way. Jesus. How does the Arista hook sit? Just have a look. See how it sits in there. Well, anyway, that's I've got that in, so that's one main important thing. That doesn't seem to show. Um, so that's got to go in there, like so. I'm going to put a bit of glue on that part there, I just thought. Other side goes up. That's in place like that, so. It's not going, it's not too bad, but I suppose it could be better in the way it's, uh, it's forming, I suppose. Uh huh, just like that on the bottom there. Right, where's the elastic bands? Put that. Or a bit of tape or something like that. Where's the tape? So I'll just put some tape around the bottom here. That's typical that is. Has scissors over here. Got that too. Have that across there. This top. Don't know what that was, but somehow gone in the place. Now, just have a look. If you notice, the pilot seats and that goes in properly on the bulkhead and that, but it doesn't kind of line up. The headrest here, you know, it's got to be just that tiny little bit forward, but from one's perspective, I don't think they'll all notice, to be honest. So that's, that can stay like that. Perfect. Right, let's put some glue on. Unless I keep forgetting. Now, I don't know what it is, but it's not forming well. As, I, as you put it. 
Let's see if I got some pegs anywhere. Did have some. Turn I've lost them all again. Just have a look here, something. Just in the back tail fin here, there's a problem I've just noticed with it. It's like one little grain that's stopping it from all getting in. Where's my hover blade here? That should be better. No. Well, it's the little zero is giving us some out problems, isn't it? There's something there that's stopping them, not all right. I don't know what that problem is. Let's have a look. There's something at the tail fin there, it's just not right. It's not going in, I should put it. I don't know what it is, guys. I don't know. I was going right. I'm going to stop recording. I'm just going to find out what this problem is. Be back to you. Alright, so I found out what the problem was with the <laughs> tail. Nothing. <laughs> Basically, because um, it's an old kit, the piece in the middle line up, it's just the ends are just like that, so I had to bring them back in. Like that. Was, I thought it was the whole thing, this part in that I was rubbing, because I going like that. No, it's just that end piece there. So we just carry on as normal. So I apologise about that, guys. Terrible, absolute terrible eye. Jesus. Sorry if you're. Yeah. Right. Another tape won't stick, brilliant. Right, let's see if I've got some elastic bands. Which I do, I have two. Thought I had more, but probably go and walk about. I just move that. Like that. That fits perfectly in. Wow. Like 
like so. Wow, that's that's really good. That's fitted on together like that. Wow, wow, we indeed. That's no problem. There's the the headrest or I wouldn't say um, armor plate behind the well behind there anyway. Where the pilot's head is, there's uh, they don't line up, so that's going to be sanded down, I suppose. Apart from that, everything looks well, nice on. That's going to be sanded out the front here. And this pilot, the gun sight goes over the top, should do anyway. Piece should go across like that. That's There. It'll stay on. So let's go let this dry off now and just hold it in place there for a bit. See if it'll hold on. Sh should do. More tape by the sounds of it. there you have it, that's the cockpit and the fuselage halves on like so I think I'm going to conclude with the end of the part I think now guys I'm afraid to say I'm just going to let that fully dry now till it's well fully dry so like so that's that Right, okay, I I hope you've enjoyed this part and the oh, ice is going to be very fun this is because I haven't built a zero kit in ages. The first one I did was Tamiya and that was about last year and I, I, don't, well, I was happy about it but the finish is absolutely horrible but it's a beautiful kit. So let's uh, start off with this. Right. Like I said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, cheers and good. Bye for now.